This Bible study is not a subject for debate, but to enlighten a Christian human and to spark his or her curiosity to truly search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. John 5.39 Check this out. Crucifixion was considered such a humiliating form of punishment that if you were a Roman citizen, of course, you couldn't be crucified, no matter what the offense. It was usually the execution of choice for slaves and people considered beneath the dignity of Roman citizenship. It was a form of public terrorism. You would be punished by being hung out publicly, naked until you died. And this sent a very powerful message to everybody else in those quarters that if you even did or thought about doing what this guy is accused of having done, you too can wind up this way. And it was very effective, excruciating, perhaps the most excruciating form of capital punishment that we know. Let's look at the word cross. An upright wooden stake or post which condemned people were executed. Before the manner of Jesus' death caused a cross to symbolize the very heart of the Christian faith. The Greek word for cross referred primarily to a pointed stake used in rows to form the walls of a defensive stockade. It was common in the biblical period for the decapitated bodies of executed persons to be publicly displayed by impaling them on stakes to discourage civil disobedience and to mock defeated military foes. This gruesome practice may explain how the stake eventually came to be used as an instrument of civil and military punishment. Such stakes came to be eventually fitted with cross beams as instruments of humiliation, torture, and execution for persons convicted as enemies of the state, foreign soldiers, rebels, and spies for examples, or of civil criminals such as robbers. Usage in the Ancient World Usage in the Ancient World during the Old Testament period, there is no evidence that the Jews fastened people to a stake or a cross as a means of execution. The law dictated death by stoning. This is found in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 2 and Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 24. But the law did permit the public display or hanging of a lawbreaker's body on a tree strictly commanding that the body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day. Grisly as such a practice seems today, it did set Israel apart from other nations. The degrading practice most often used throughout the ancient world was to allow the victim to rot in public. Persons so displayed or hanged after execution by stoning for breaking Israel's law were said to be accursed of God. This helps explain the references to Jesus being killed by hanging on a tree and the statement that Jesus was cursed in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Although Jesus died in a different manner, he was publicly displayed as a criminal and enemy of the state. Ancient writers do not tell us much about how execution on a stake or a cross was carried out. But excavated relief sculptures do show the Assyrians executed their captured enemies by forcing their living bodies down onto pointed stakes. This barbaric cruelty was not crucifixion as we think of it today but impalement. Scholars are not certain when a cross beam was added to the simple stake. Jeremiah's mention of princes being hung up by their hands by the Babylonians may refer to the use of a cross beam. But there is no way of knowing whether the prophet speaks of a method of execution or the dishonoring of bodies killed in battle. Classical Greek historians refer to the stake or cross as a method of execution during the time of the Persians. But 
it is not clear whether the victim was tied or nailed to the wood or impaled. Ezra chapter 6 verse 11 may imply that the Persians continued to use impalement as a method of execution. The reference to hanging in Esther chapter 2 verse 23 and chapter 5 verse 14 probably referred to either impalement or crucifixion. The hangman's noose was not commonly used in Persia during the biblical period. The word translated as gallows in the New King James Version refers not to a scaffold for hanging with a rope but a pole or stake for impaling. Crucifixion on a stake or cross was practiced by the Greeks, notably Alexander the Great, who hung 2,000 people on crosses when the city of Tyre was destroyed. During the period between Greek and Roman control of Palestine, the Jewish ruler Alexander Janaeus crucified 800 Pharisees who opposed him at Bethlehem. But these executions were condemned as detestable and abnormal by decent-minded people of Janaeus's day, as well as by the later Jewish historian Josephus. From the early days of the Roman Republic, death on the cross was used for rebellious slaves and bandits, although Roman citizens were rarely subjected to this method of execution. The practice continued well beyond the New Testament period as one of the supreme punishment for military and political crimes such as desertion, spying, revealing secrets, rebellion, and sedition. Following the conversion of the Emperor Constantine to Christianity, the cross became a sacred symbol and its use by Romans as a means of torture and death was abolished death on a cross death on a cross those sentenced to death on a cross in the Roman period were usually beaten with leather lashes a procedure that often resulted in severe loss of blood victims were then generally forced to carry the upper cross beam to the execution site where the central stake was already set up after being fastened to the crossbeam on the ground with ropes or in rare cases nails through the wrist, the naked victim was then hoisted with the crossbeam against a standing vertical stake. A block or peg was sometimes fastened to the stake as a crude seat. The feet were then tied or nailed to the stake. The recent discovery near Jerusalem of the bones of a crucifixion victim suggests that the knees were bent up side by side parallel to the cross beam and the nail was then driven through the sides of the ankles. Both of his feet had been pierced with a spike just below the heel. Death by suffocation or exhaustion normally follow only after a long period of agonizing pain. The shape of the cross the shape of the cross. In time the simple pointed stake first used for execution was modified. The four most important of the resulting crosses are number one the Latin cross shaped like a lowercase t on which it seems likely that Jesus died for our sins because of the notice placed above his head. This is found in Matthews chapter 27 Verse 37. Number 2. The St. Anthony's Cross, which has the cross beam at the top, shaped like a capital T. Number 3. The St. Andrew's Cross, which is shaped like a capital X. And number 4. The so called Greek Cross, which has the cross beam in the center, shaped like a plus sign. The Significance of the Cross The authors of the Gospels tells us that the Lord Jesus spoke of the cross before his death, 
as a symbol of the necessity of the full commitment, even unto death, for those who would be his disciples. But the major significance of the cross after Jesus' death and resurrection is its use as a symbol of Jesus' willingness to suffer for our sins so that we might be reconciled to God and know his peace. Thus the cross symbolizes the glory of the Christian gospel, the fact that through this offensive means of death, the death of sin against us was nailed to the cross, and we, having been crucified with Christ, have been freed from sin and death and made alive to God. The cross, then, is the symbol of Jesus' love, God's power to save, and the thankful believer's unreserved commitment to Christian discipleship. To those who know the salvation that Christ gained for us through his death, it is a wondrous cross indeed. The Crucifixion of Christ The method of torture and execution used by the Romans to put Christ to death. At a crucifixion, the victim usually was nailed or tied to a wooden stake and left to die. Crucifixion was used by many nations of the ancient world, including Assyria, Media, and Persia. The Romans later adopted this method and used it often throughout their empire. Crucifixion was the Romans' most severe form of execution, so it was reserved only for slaves and criminals. No Roman citizen could be crucified. Crucifixion involved attaching the victim with nails through the wrist or with leather thongs to a crossbeam attached to a vertical stake. Sometimes blocks or pins were put on the stake to give the victims some support as they hung suspended from the crossbeam. At times the feet were also nailed to the vertical stake. As the victim hung dangling by the arms, the blood could no longer circulate to the vital organs. Only by supporting themselves on the seat or pin could victims gain relief. But gradually, exhaustion set in and death followed, although usually not for several days. If victims had been severely beaten, they would not live this long. To hasten death, the executioners sometimes broke the victim's legs with a club. Then they could no longer support their bodies to keep blood circulating and death quickly followed. Usually bodies were left to rot or to be eaten by scavengers. To the Israelites, impalement was the most disgusting form of death. He is hanged is a curse of God. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23 yet the Jewish Sanhedrin sought and obtained Roman authorization to have Jesus crucified as was the custom the charge against Jesus was attached to the cross he was offered a brew to deaden his senses but he refused there was no need for the soldiers to break his legs to hasten death by the ninth hour probably 3 o'clock p.m. In only six hours, Jesus was already dead. Jesus' body was not left to rot. The disciples were able to secure Pilate's permission to give him a proper burial. The cross has been a major stumbling block in the way of the Jews, preventing the majority of them from accepting Jesus as the Messiah. The Apostle Paul summed up the importance of the crucifixion best. We preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Out of the ugliness and agony of crucifixion, God accomplished the greatest good of all, the redemption of sinners. Before we close tonight's study, I would like to say a few things. If you are unsaved, perhaps you deny it, 
saying my attitude is merely negative, you do err. If you are not the friend of Christ, you are his enemy. There is no third class. He that is not with me is against me, is his own verdict, and from that there is no appeal. You have despised his authority, flouted his laws, treated his claims with contempt. You reject his yoke and scepter, and refuse to be ruled by him. Thus, you unite yourselves with those who cast him out and hounded him to death. Yes, despite your wicked treatment of him, he is set before you in the gospel as one willing and able to heal the wounds sin has made and to save your souls from eternal death. If you will throw down the weapons of your warfare against him, surrender to his lordship, and trust in his redeeming blood, he will accept you now. Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. This is found in John, chapter 6, verse 37. I would like for you to play this Bible study over and over until it is in your spirit. I would like for you also to pray with me at this time concerning your relationship to the cross. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would forgive us for all our sins, iniquities, and transgressions. Father, I ask that you would make us worthy, Lord, to partake, Lord, of your death, your suffering, and your resurrection. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will come into our life and be our Lord and our personal Savior. And Lord, to whoever is listening to this tape, Lord, or looking at this film, Lord, I ask that you will bind your word upon the tables of their heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I also ask, Lord, that you will save them, Lord, to the utmost. Lord, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And Lord, I ask that you will bind the hands of Satan off of their life and off of their salvation. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you, the blood of Jesus against you. We bind you, we cast you off of their lives right now in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you will continue to bless, Lord, through the Bible studies. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.